I'm Kenyatta from Louisiana. I'm 37. I will be telling my story today about a silent child who faced trauma up until adulthood, who lost her voice again as an adult during a second incident and finally found it as I got older. I grew up the youngest of four girls. I lived with my mom and my dad. My dad was very soft-spoken but very gentle and caring and my mom was honestly very mean and abusive. Childhood was really rough, very scary, and it was also traumatic as well. Mom was an alcoholic for many years, and when she got drunk, she would get very angry and whip us for unknown reasons most of the time. And my father was like very soft-spoken, so she would have gentleman friends that she would bring around as cousins who were, I guess, like secret boyfriends. So. He never really made a fuss about it, but me being the youngest, and I was very scared of her, so everybody thought I was honestly mute for years. I was scared to talk when she came around, so I never said anything. Being silent for me was more so me being the shadow. I was the only one who did not look like my mother, so I was the black sheep for the most part. I was scared to ask for anything. I was scared to do anything. I would just sit in the corner and honestly not talk. If I wanted anything to eat or drink, I would ask my big sisters and they'll ask for it or they'll go get it for me. I would ask my father from time to time and he would sneak stuff to me. I think he was afraid of my mother as well. The only time I really had my voice was when I went to my grandma's house. She was this super sweet elderly lady. She actually saw me so I talked and when I talked I, I wouldn't stop when I got with her. <laughs> so that was my happy place day is implanted in my head. He was a friend of my mom that had come around a few times prior to the date, but we really didn't know much about him. He was just a face we saw a few times before, but his face just always gave me a creepy feeling. The time of the incident, I was six years old. The day of the incident, it was after school. I remember sitting at a coffee table doing homework. And my, my older sisters were all just around the house playing. My mother was sitting on the couch and her guy friend was laying on the other couch as if he was asleep. It was time for her to start dinner, so she asked everybody to walk to the grocery store with her. It was like a five minute walk from the house. And I finally opened my mouth. I said, mama, can I come? Because I glanced back. He glanced at me and closed his eyes as if he was asleep. So I got scared and I asked my mom if I could go. She said, no, you have to do your homework. I got upset because I'm six, I'm in kindergarten. I'm coloring. <laughs> it, it wasn't homework that couldn't wait. I was scared to stay. She told me no. She took my sisters and they all left. So I sat on the floor for a few minutes. I guess he waited until everybody was out of sight and he grabbed me by the hand and took me into a room. There was a large bed that he laid me on and there was like a big chester to the side. I remember staring at the whole time. Um, he laid me down, pulled my bottoms down. And all I remember is the smell of Carmex. I'm not sure why, but it was extremely strong. And that smell just bothers me to this day. I remember pain of him being on me and in me and it being over after a few minutes. He took me back to the living room, told me to finish my homework, and he laid back down. Maybe 20, 30 minutes passed and my mom and my sisters came back home. She looked at me, asked me what was wrong. I didn't say anything. And she just went about the rest of the day. Nothing was said to me before, or during or after the incident from him. But I, I would see him days after and he just walked by me like nothing happened. I didn't tell anyone because I didn't feel like no one would listen. My dad was a tall, slim, frail guy and this guy was way bigger than him. I've never known for my dad to get angry or loud or get into a fight or anything. And I've seen my mother abuse him a few times. So I knew I couldn't tell him. I couldn't tell my mom because that was her friend. And I was already scared to talk to her anyway. So me trying to tell her something I didn't think would go well. I didn't tell my sisters because they weren't old enough. I didn't think they had any way of helping me. I did tell my grandma. My grandma was a frail 87 year old lady. She tried to tell my mom and my mother confronted her in an aggressive manner and she forced me to stop going over there. The one person I shared 
this incident with I was forced to cut off communication with and it broke my heart so I remained silent I was going to say after a while, I think it became a problem at school because I stopped talking. So I guess for the next year, everything basically remained the same. I, I didn't talk much. I still wasn't allowed to see my memo. And my dad started working more because the guys started coming around more. We eventually moved into a new home and my dad was home more. He found a new job, so he was home more. And my sisters had a sleepover for one of their birthday one weekend. The same guy was there and he attempted to assault my next to the oldest sister. He was caught by my dad and an altercation erupted. My dad shot him in the shoulder. Police came. He was taken to the hospital and arrested. They detained my dad and I was so scared he was going to go to jail. I finally said it. I finally told him what happened. So after that, CPS was involved and they took us from my mother until everything got sorted out. So we stayed gone for a year. We were separated from my next to the oldest sister. She got to go with her dad and the rest of us went to foster care. He eventually went to jail after a year of court. He was sentenced to 25 years. I've not heard a thing from him until recently. We got a call. They had to notify us that he was getting out. I have not seen him around town, thank God, but the job that I have, I got to hear his voice. He was calling to set up service and I heard a voicemail with his voice on it and I had a panic attack at work. <laughs> it gave me some relief because we thought he was out of our lives. Knowing that he served time in jail, it gave me a little relief because I thought he was out of our lives. As an adult, we did find out that my mother was still in communication with him throughout his Senate. I felt betrayed that she was still having communication with him because around the time I found out, I I was going to counseling and I honestly forgave her for not believing me. And I, I, I started my healing journey. She passed around that time, so I couldn't really express my feelings to her anymore. So I was sent back into, I felt like a traumatic coma <laughs> because I, I started basically acting out again as an adult. And this trauma affected me as a child I felt guarded. I felt like I couldn't trust anybody. I blocked a lot out. I always did good in school. I, I was very smart in school, but I did fight a lot. I was arrested as a child. I did a juvenile detention because I let my anger get the best of me a lot. I felt like when I got angry, a lot of old emotions came out. So I was unable to contain it. And it was hard for me to, to calm down for the most part. I, I do feel like my mom failed me. As a girl, I don't feel like I should have been left alone with him at all. That should never have been allowed. I feel like there was too much trust put into him. I feel like she should have saw something was wrong because I, I should have been talking. <laughs> it, it, it was never a concern for her that I never spoke. It was never a concern for her that I would throw a tantrum when I didn't want to come back home. I don't think being in foster care was better. I felt like the family who had us was honestly only doing it for benefit. It wasn't really for a genuine reason because you wanted to help kids who were going through something. I don't think that's what it was. I was unhappy there because I was in a totally different town. It was just me and my sisters. My oldest sister was a teenager, so of course she wanted to hang out with her friends. Me and my sister, who's right above me, didn't have a good childhood, even there. We were picking peas and berries in the field. For fun but it was actually work because they got paid for it so we didn't get to like go outside and play with other kids or ride bikes rollerblade we didn't do stuff like that i really hated it because i was away from my dad my memo had passed so i didn't get to enjoy my childhood with her for long but i still wanted to be around my dad and i was took from him and as soon as we got back from foster care my mom took me from him again we moved out when we moved I did try to maintain a relationship with my dad. My mom remarried and her husband at the time didn't like my dad. So it was not his wishes for me to go visit. I was allowed to speak to him on the phone, but that was it. And that went on for maybe a year, almost two. They split up and I was allowed to go back and visit and maintain my relationship with him again. 
I was 21. I was actually living with my mom again after a bad breakup. And I was friends with a guy from town. We would talk on the phone a lot. We would see each other in public places and hang out. And he invited to meet me to his house at one point to assist with a medical need for his child. I went over and got his daughter situated and then we decided to just hang out, watch TV and have a couple of drinks. I just gotten out of a very bad relationship that was abusive and injuries from that last incident kind of put me in a bad place medically where it gave me a lot of head trauma. So the alcohol with the pain from the bruising on my head forced me to need to lay down for a minute. He told me it was okay to go to the back and lay down for a while. He'll sit up front and kind of clean up the mess we had made. So I went to lay down. I'm not sure how long I was out, but I do remember waking up to my friend being on top of me, inside of me, and me pushing to get him off. When I woke up and realized what was going on, I was honestly in a state of shock because I didn't think that was the type of relationship we had. I thought we were just friends. So I, I kind of fought him off me for a while until he got up and he stated he thought that's what I wanted to happen because I was in his bed. And I reminded him, you sent me back here to lay down until my head stopped hurting. That's not what the plan was for you to come and get in the bed with me. You could have woke me up and sent me home. So I put my clothes back on and I left. I didn't talk to him for weeks. Something told me to just call him to see if he would kind of admit to what he did. But I asked him to meet me at a public place. We met at a park and he started talking to me as if nothing ever happened. I told him I couldn't be his friend anymore because I feel like you're acting as if you did nothing wrong to me. The first few minutes he, he stated he didn't feel like he did anything. I reminded him of all the details I remembered and he finally admitted, yeah, I did do that. I said, well, if I didn't give you permission to, do you not feel like that was assault? He said, I did what I wanted to do, but there's nothing you can do about it because nobody's going to believe you. Around town, he's very popular and very known. So I took that statement and considered it. With some of the history that I have, some of the background that I have, I did believe no one would believe me. Here I am, an average girl, my word against this popular guy. I felt like I was back in my childhood again, so I kept quiet. Once he admitted what he did, I was honestly flabbergasted. I was stuck in the moment for a while. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. And when I did move, I drove to a liquor store and bought the strongest drink I could find. That took me down a path of alcoholism for years. I drank to block out a lot, and then I started to medicate myself. It went on for years until I got in a relationship with the guy and we found out I was pregnant. I lost that pregnancy, but that was my sign to get help because I thought either those incidents led to me not being able to carry this baby or me sabotaging myself was the reason I couldn't carry that baby. Oh, it took so long. I don't think I calmed down until I had my kids. <laughs> After all the trauma I endured, around the time I turned 24, I decided to find my voice and take control of my life, my anger, my resentment, and all of my pain, and I seek therapy. I did that for a few years until I found peace. I'm recovering by keeping journal. I am a mother now. I keep myself busy. I try to be a good friend. I'm very close with my sisters and I try to make sure my children know they can talk to me about anything. I'm trying my hardest to be the mom that I feel like I didn't have. Show them emotional support and show them that they can trust me in regards to anything that they want to talk about. I forgave my mother before she died. That was actually my first step of me healing. I tried to forgive my first abuser. I don't think I can because he's still around children. From what I know, he's still around children. And I'm more concerned it'll happen again. I 
can't forgive my second abuser because I don't feel like he's really taking accountability for anything he's done, whether it be the actual abuse or the damage he caused me mentally. My reasoning for sharing my story is there are a lot of people around me who won't share theirs. I couldn't be a voice for myself when I was younger, so I want to be a voice now. I want people to know you don't have to stay silent, you don't have to be afraid, and you don't have to remain damaged 